Okay, welcome everyone. So we'll give everyone a chance to sign on while we kind of get ready here. Have a sip of coffee. We're doing some upgrades in the uh, studio, so we're on headphones today. We don't have our microphone boom. <laughs> we'll be okay though. This is how we used to do it in the beginning. So we've got our Alienware headphones. We are ready to go. But let, let's talk a little bit about the disclaimer while we're waiting for some people to sign up. Um, past performance is no indicator of future performance. Uh, we are not registered investment advisors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing in this show should be considered an uh, order to buy or sell any security or option. Um, as we said, it's for entertainment purposes only. And as always, go ahead and read the rest of the disclaimer. Uh, we'll wait till somebody gets on here. Get some people in here. Interesting day in the market. No? So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so you can see it was kind of, a, you know, besides that bump in the morning, that little gap up in the morning, it was pretty much a flat sideways market all day. Um, you know, the Dow ended up about oh, at 90 points. The S&P ended up about seven points, a little bit closer to that all time high. I believe it's uh, uh, 2876 uh, or 79. And the Nasdaq was up five points. It kind of was bouncing up around and down, right? It opened red, it kind of fluctuated during lunch there. And then it ended up getting in the green there towards the end. Uh, the Russell 2K, the small caps was up about seven points. And that's a nice little move for the small caps. The VIX, VIX continues to be pushed down below 13. Huh? So we're not getting a whole lot of volatility um, or warnings of volatility. So it seems like the risk on trade is still alive and well, although the S&P doesn't seem to be uh, able to push over that all-time high. And so, you know, the big talk, of course, is still the trade talk, that and the Manafort trial. Uh, the Manafort trial is still out to the jury is out deliberating. Um, the trade talk is now we're hearing that evidently we're close to a deal with Mexico, which is the first domino that we've been talking about. We've been talking about this for about three weeks, right? We've been saying that with the North American trade, first thing Trump needs to do is get a deal with Mexico, right? Gets a deal with Mexico, brings Canada on board. FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Nobody wants to miss out. Mexico's of all people. If Mexico makes a deal with Trump, man, you know what I mean? So Canada is going to be a little bit jealous. So they're going to want to get in board. Then all of a sudden you've got a NAFTA, except you've got it in two parts. Very smart. Um, and then we've got the uh, big meeting with the Chinese embassy, uh, the Chinese diplomats towards the end of August. And then we're trying to get a big meeting with Trump and Z. So this trade stuff is just starting to work its way through. Now, one of the things that have been taking a big hit on this uh, trade war talk is gold, right? The dollar's been pushed up. Interest rates are going up. Nothing looks good for gold. Well, there's a big article on CNBC today about how the negative bias on gold is at its highest in so long. Well, is that capitulation? We've been talking about it for about the last week, right? We went long gold at the beginning of last week. Um, and we're going to stay with this position. Spot gold was up about $11, $12 today. So it looks like we might get, be getting confirmation of that bottom. And if we do, it's off to the races. And we're in we're in real nice. Now, look, gold, spot gold was up to about $12 today. But you can still get a lot of these options on the cheap because the bias is so much against it. Um, so if you're looking for a gold play, definitely. Uh, now's the time to make... Uh, pick the fruit while it's low hanging and just before it's ripe, right? Uh, let's see. Oh, the Tesla saga continues. Tesla took a little bump today. It was under $300, right? We still got the whole Elon Musk thing going. It's it's like romper room now. You know, people make fun of Trump and stuff, but <laughs> I mean, why does Elon Musk get a pass? You know, for you guys that are into the gaming stocks, uh, ATVI, which is Activision, I believe they're uh, Rainbow Seven and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, your big sports uh your big sports stock is EA. Uh, the symbol is EA, and it's electronic arts sports. Uh, you know, they make the Tiger Wood game. They make Madden football. They make all kinds of stuff. Uh, I believe they're affiliated with the Sims product now and stuff. So it's a pretty large operation, right? 
Um, but what continues to make the money in games is the is the uh, first person shooters and things like that. Your battlefields, your Rainbow Sevens. Uh, what's the big one now? Uh, I don't even play these, but uh, Fortnite, Fortnite. If you find me playing video games, it's usually playing chess and stuff like that. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm not as exciting as people think I am. But EA, uh, it might be they might be about to lose the Battlefield because Battlefield 5 is coming out here and the stock's been on a pretty good run. Um, so it might be a good short candidate for you guys looking for ideas. If you're looking for something to research tonight, maybe over the next day or two, um, there's a lot of people coming out and saying Battlefield 5 is going to be a big disappointment. We know how this goes, right? When uh, uh, like the latest Grand Theft Auto, if it's a bad game and stuff like that, we know how it goes. So there might be a little position there uh, for you guys that like to play those gaming stocks. We played ATVI. We like it. We like Activision for a play. Um, because it's a fairly predictable plot stock when you can get it at the right spot. Um, but it's like, to us, it's like a gold play. Um, you know, we always do well with gold. We always do well, it seems to be, with like the Qs, the ETF and stuff. But it's not something you can play all the time. You've got to pick your spots because it'll, it'll set you up really good spots. And uh, you need to be able to... Uh, capitalize on those but it's not an always tradable kind of thing it is for the everything's tradable for the day traders but for us we don't we don't trade like that we're not looking for a tenth of a point and crap like that so that kind of that's kind of um uh excuse me but that that's pretty much the gist of things today you know it was it was a nice day um as far as calmness goes, you know, the news cycle was fairly calm. We had a little bit of uh, Trump tweeting out against Powell and stuff, which he, he needs to be careful when he does that because he doesn't even want the implication of him intimidating a Federal Reserve chief. Um, that's just that's just bad medicine right there. So and he probably knows that. And he's just as his usual. He's pushing the envelope as far to the edge of the table as he can without it falling off the table. So, you know, one thing you've got to do, and we'll 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 kind of go to the comments right after this, um, because it was a mellow Monday. Let's keep it a quick show today. Everybody can kind of uh, go start their Monday afternoons recovery from uh, the first day of the week. But you know, it, it's it's an interesting thing with with Donald Trump and the uh, the trade thing, right? And you know, we've talked about this before. You know, we we we're investors, so we support agendas, we support legislations, we support interest uh, interest rate controls, and 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 whatever's done with that. Central bank. Uh, a lot of people like to call it manipulation, but usually the people that call it manipulations are the ones that aren't making money in the stock market because of foolish decisions. Um, the central banks have done very well. Uh, uh, navigating the, the the globe out of these uh, financial crises that we were in in 2007, 2008. Uh, so give credit where credit's due. But let's give some credit to where credit's due with Donald Trump. Look, when he started this trade thing, you know, he came in with this, I am going to fix trade straight across the board. And he said that. And everybody said, yeah, 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 yeah. And the minute he started to, right, he he got rid of NAFTA. He got, uh, there's other agreements that he's kind of torn up and thrown in the rubbish can. And people just attacked him, right? And he stuck with his plan. He stuck with his plan. And guess what? And he said, I don't want group agreements anymore, right? That's one of his big things. I don't want group agreements anymore. So just like NAFTA, he disassembled NAFTA and he wants to deal with Canada uh, on one hand and he wants to deal with Mexico on another hand. Rather than giving them one deal, he's going to make sure it's beneficial for both sides um, and everybody involved. And it was a smart thing to do. But, you know, it, it, it's very easy to be anti-Trump right now. And it's very easy to, when he does good things, not give him credit for it and to just act like they never happened. But good things are good things. And he's now got Mexico close to a deal. He'll pull Canada right after that. He's got the Chinese coming for a meeting. Um, it sounds like his plan is working. So now anything can happen. But let's just make sure that we always look at this as investors with an open mind. This is why you can't have bias and be a successful trader.
Okay. You see it on the message boards all the time. You see all these insults to Donald Trump and stuff. And it's always because they're mad. They picked the wrong stock. It's fucking Trump's fault. It's effing Trump's fault. It's the orange buffoon's fault, right? It's not my fault because I picked the bad stock, right? Um, it's always somebody else's fault. It's either, it was Janet Yellen's fault, uh, five years ago. It was Alan Greenspan's fault 15 years ago. It's, uh, it'll be Jerome Powell's fault soon. And anything that doesn't have another name for it is Donald Trump's fault. So let's give the president good credit where credit's due. He is doing a, an amazing job with this trade and let's, let's hope that it continues. Okay. Regardless of what you feel about anything else. Okay. We are investors. We are wealth builders. We're about making money. Okay. Um, so look, guys, let's kind of look through the comments. It doesn't, everybody's probably tired today, right? It was kind of a long weekend to, uh, and, and, uh, uh, for a normal weekend, it was kind of a long weekend. And I know in, here in Hawaii, it was just humid as all heck. Um, so everybody's kind of worn down from the weekend. It was sunny. So there's probably a lot of sunburn going around and stuff. Um, but look, so we're going to call it a show. Okay. Uh, the, let's kind of run down what we, uh, what we like to run down at the end of the show, which is what we're playing. So we're long gold. We're long the cues. Um, we still like steel. We love steel right now. Look, for you steel players, Jeff, right? Um, you steel guys, uh, X had a great day today, and there's a reason it had a great day, right? It's smelling what the Trump is cooking, right? And I love that. I'm going to use that, okay? Nobody is allowed to use that, okay? Uh, U.S. Steel is smelling what the Trump is cooking, and he's cooking up some trade deals. So, you know, there was some good buying in U.S. Steel. It had a rough Friday, right? It got below that $29 level, and it's almost a panic level, right? But it, uh, but it kicked right back in Friday afternoon. It can it follow through today. Um, the other one for you guys out there that are steel players that were in long already, we've got some five dollar calls for AKS. We like AKS going forward. It got a little beat up after that earnings report, which what really wasn't a bad earnings report. Um, for you with a little bit more pocket cash, X is always the best play. Um, be careful when you play the options because when X gets into its groove, it can be incredibly volatile. Um, it's It can be really rough playing options on. But AKS is a little bit more of a fluid mover. So for you guys out there looking for trades, like I said, we're as a service in some $5 calls um, for AKS and we're liking it right now. So all you steel players, man, get into it. We're still long AINV. Um, we like financials. It's had a little bit of a rough spell, but it's been slow trickle up and we are still short the dollar. Okay. So you guys have a great afternoon. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoy the show, if you get some information out of it, please share it with other people. Um, we could use all the viewers we can get. And that's all the groveling I'm doing for a Monday, okay? So we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow for the Tuesday morning market. It looks like we're going to have a nice uh, calm afternoon. The news cycle is pretty uh, calm and stuff like that. So you guys have a great afternoon. We'll see you guys for tomorrow night's show, okay? Aloha.